when when we Hello. push forward Anybody is there? that we go we go See how deeper rude you into are, that glory. You don't even want to talk to me. No, I'm not because yes, off camera you I asked you who you insulted you the prophet. Luke, it just seems destructive and saboteur, and it's unhelpful. Well, it just seems. You're like trying that. to reason with an irrational man. It's like trying to play chess with a pigeon. Look, it, it, it will knock over the pieces and shit on the board so, and then strut anyways, around like so, it would. Mohammed was the greatest man now, that ever yes, lived for. Yes. To death, yes. And you Mohammed was the no, greatest man. No, you're being rude. Man. You, you are of, following Mohammed and Mohammed has Mohammed turned you into this. Mohammed was the greatest man that ever lived. You never behaved like this when you were Christian, Luke. Well, no, and I can't and allow him to be reasonably respectful. I can't allow him. He would never have done that when he was a Christian. Take the Shahada and become a Muslim. You definitely are an advertisement why no no one should take the Shahada. The main thing. Uh, oh well, the, the, that's the, not the, they, this is the point. Like the 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 life after peace, we were the life after death thing is the bigger thing because it will go on for longer. But that journey starts here in this world. Okay, we begin so that spiritual journey, journey now. Your journey. You don't need to, but there's a benefit of doing so. Well, the thing is, in, if you don't, if you don't start that journey now, yeah. you'll never start it. Do you know, well, no, if you don't start that journey death, in this I'll, life, you don't think you'll, there, there, there is no opportunity to start. Oh, so you could say I believe in Jesus, but then you end up not in the. So if on your deathbed, yeah. you were to do, yeah, exactly, before your last breath. If you were to declare yourself a Christian and, and, and give your heart to our Lord and Saviour, you would be declared innocent. But you would then begin that journey that we're all on in terms of growing into that 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 that, that, that. No, no, no. Well, I mean, that's certainly that's certainly one way Christians have attempted to describe this the economy. I, I think I think purgatory. I think there's things that indicate the direction of purgatory. But I don't think that there's enough evidence to say definitely purgatory. You don't know is the answer, is that right? Well, what I do know, you're, you're right. I could not, I could not give you a a definitive description, and that's biblical because the Bible says that now we see in part and we see through a a, a, a mirror, a, a glass darkly. You know, it's kind of like we don't see the full picture now. But the idea is that you continue the journey along. Um, synergy with the energies of God so that you become more godlike and that is a, a journey that continues into eternity according according to what the scripture does it say that that journey continues after death yeah it talks about increasing in glory and growing in glory um, I, I mean reincarnation no no reincarnation is about being reborn in this world yeah that could continue your journey toward Christ yeah but but we Christians Christians obviously don't believe in reincarnation, and that's very clear. We but believe that there's reincarnation it, in the next world. No, because with it, a development period, it, it, we don't believe in a concept called re, uh, reincarnation. That's not what we believe. No, no, in. I understand. But what I'm saying is that you are. Doesn't matter how many times you say the word reincarnation. No, I'm okay, just going to say I don't believe. No, no, no. But you're saying that you're born into the next world. You continue into the next world, and there's a journey of learning, uh, of becoming more and more Christ-like in the next world. That's your concept. It, yeah, it's, but it's connected to the idea of the resurrection, which is the transformation of this physical body into a spiritual body that is then equipped with all the properties and attributes for that eternal journey. Uh, but so, so it's not a static uh, heaven? Well, I mean, the, the, the kind of Christian art that we've, that, that, that we've celebrated as part of our culture and our history has, because it's been disconnected from the, the story about it in our modern culture, we've lost sight of it. The, the, the fact is, God is making all things new now. He's making a new world now. And the scriptures talk about a new heaven and a new earth. And it's talking that that begins right now. The church is the, the sort of um, the first wave of a, an invasion from the future. And the idea of that invasion is that through love and good works, we conquer the world for Christ. 
this world? This world. And what is the point in conquering the world? Isn't the point of the second conquest by coming that the world is then conquered? Oh yeah, that price so what, like, what, what, You know, in essence, the, it doesn't matter how successful you are or not. It, well, it matters to you. It matters to you because the Christ says repeatedly that you'll be rewarded according to your works. Now the thing is, without Christ's salvific sort of, without the acceptance of Christ's salvific work, all that you can present to a holy God are filthy rites. However, if you um, accept Christ, then you're saved, but then your works will be rewarded. They will count for something. But as of the moment that a person isn't a Christian, their works count for so, nothing. So, so a Christian um, from the age of 20 who does good work, who has who purifies themselves in yeah. line with the discipleship of Christ, Christ. Yeah. and those that die just before and, and say and say the innocent. What's the difference in their post-life journey? So, so they, they one starting from further back. So Christ, but, but, but does that really matter? So, so well, it matters for those that don't know Christ, and it matters because it says in Scripture that those that build their salvation on rocks and rubble and dirt and earth, they'll be saved. But they'll be saved like one who's passing through fire, and their works will be tested. And even though they'll be saved, they'll still suffer a loss. And that loss is the reward that they could have otherwise had. That's certainly the, the way the Catholics describe it. So, so for example, if, if a Christian, like the, within the Christian worldview of works, um, there's a freedom in that there's no rule about what, how to do good. Like there's no one size fits all description of how to do good. You do good in your circumstances, I do good in my circumstances, yeah? But it, it's obvious to anyone with a rational mind that there are some ways of doing good that are better than other ways of doing good. So for example, you know, someone who's homeless, who's probably got an addiction, it's probably not, it, 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 good works are relative, yeah, they have a relative impact. So we, and we can measure their relative impact and there are some ways of doing good that are better than others. Now, when your works are presented before the judge, Christ, at the judgment of the believer, so we, we're, not, we're not talking about non-Christians here, we're only talking about Christians, yeah? When your works are presented before Christ as a believer, they'll be sifted and tested and trialed and if they are of little value you will receive little reward if they are of great value they will receive great reward and so it really does matter and the loss so, you, so you're saying there's a deficit in there's a, a differentiation yeah. of reward but so savior saves being saved is the, the christ uh, saves you not yeah. your works yeah and then but then you add to your salvation you add to your salvation so how what's the differentiation between someone who has high, what is the reward is what I'm asking. That, that's a great question and and in terms of how the scriptures describe it it talks about it talks about a reward it simply describes a reward so christ talks about in his parables that he who is given much will be given more and he who is given little even that little that he has will be taken away and you know he, he won't receive anything so it, it's the idea that I, I would i would say that it is about a greater depth in the bliss and the joy of god i think is the best language so, that I can so, use to describe so it. In, in a post-death uh, existence, you've effectively got a hierarchy of those who have got higher levels of the glory of God uh, bestowed upon them. And those who start reward. further ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, but they, 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 can con they continue you, down that path. Are you kind of thinking of it as a kind of path towards God, a closeness to God? Is that the reward? I mean, the, the in, uh, for, the, for the sakes of our conversation, yeah, let's use that analogy, but I don't want... Think about what you, what you mean. Because we're, we're trying to describe something that, that has never yet been experienced, and that's where language is failing so me. Where do you get this particular belief? I, I get it from what the scripture says. So for example, Christ tells a number of parables, 
about the idea of reward. He states very clearly that he is going to reward people according to their works. Um, the apostles talk about the importance of doing good works and that, that our works will be trialed. So it's all the way through the New Testament, this idea that whilst works don't save us, works will be rewarded for those that are saved. And that that then, you know, then obviously it's kind of like, well, what is that reward? Well, the point of that reward, we have to look at the telos. The telos is to know God intimately, to see God's face, to be um, an intimate friend of God. And so and those... That's what I was kind of saying, right. Yeah, and saying yeah, yeah I wasn't God. arguing with no, you. No, no, I'm, I was just, saying, I'm not yeah. saying I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. um, that seems to be represented by what you're saying. Yeah, so, so I would say that those that have done better works will start further ahead than those who start with poor works. But everyone continues along the journey. So even that person who's behind will at some point get to the point that the person in front of him was. If you see what I'm saying. Okay. So there's a, so there's a verse in Dante's the... Inferno where after the judgment, a lady it, it describes this old lady at the back of the queue and angels pick her up and bring her to the front to see the beer for, to see to see God. And as like on easy jet. Yeah, if you want to think of it like that, you can. And then the angel, somebody questions it, says why she said, because through her life, she didn't just worship, she did as she was asked. Mm. So, submission. No, 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 no submission. Synergy. Synergy. She did. She fed the synergy. Yeah. She the poor. It's synergy. It's synergy with the energy of God. It's synergy that's with the work of the Holy Spirit. With, that's, yeah, but that's not what's being asked. So, so there is being in line with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But that's not necessarily uh, reflected by that comment. No, 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 it's, it's, more about, it's more about a, it's more about a loving relationship. The idea of dynamics of submission and obedience over power is a, a dynamic that's not that's not connected to our paradigm the, uh, the, the, the paradigm well, the of the, of the, the, par the, the, the paradigm that we that we have is about intimacy and knowledge of God it's about relationship with God and that's the the kind of thing that we're that, that, that that's we're the kind talking of thing about. you're focusing on yeah the, the basis that's the kind of thing the, the Bible focuses on yeah disobedience of God no sin the definition of sin is to fall short of the glory of God uh, that's literally the definition of sin. Literally. Fall short of the glory. Sin is an archery term from the Latin. It means to fall short or be off the mark. But the original sin was the disobedience of, of God. The original sin yeah, was to fall short of the Adam glory of God, yeah. Well, no, but it was disobedience. It, it, it expresses itself through disobedience, but yeah, it yeah, falls, yeah. it's to fall short of the glory of God. What other, what other way other than disobedience is there to fall short of obedience? Yeah, so it expresses itself. No, no, it's the only so, way so to express it. it, it it's to, so it, no, a better way to, de to describe it is as C.S. Lewis does, as the great divorce. So it's about the rupturing of relationship. It's about, you know, it's more of, it's not, it's not, it's, not, it, it's, it's more about me turning my back on you rather it's than it is about so you, you just the, telling me do this and me not doing it. So these Look, I've, I've explained it several yeah, yeah, times. Yeah. If you don't want to accept my explanation, that's totally fine. Well, I, I would say that, you know, well, that's what, you know, it's a bit narrow, but the, the issue is that these are commandments that are given to yeah. the Jewish people. Yeah. And it's the breaking of those commandments well, that, that is the sin. So the first commandment is to worship one God and yeah. there's only one God. So that's, so when you say turning away, that's still disobedience from the first commandment. So, I mean, it's, you say, look, I've expressed it, I've told you what it is, I mean, that's all like, there is I mean, to it. The thing is, but it's like you want me... I'm not being... Yeah. Un, I'm, I'm not being... So, un, so let's being, look at... Let's, I'm trying to be in line let, 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 what let's Christianity look, so, says. So let's look at what the, the Christianity says about the law. The point of the Old Testament law was to demonstrate that sin operates in our flesh. The point of the law was to demonstrate that human beings could not of their own merit ever achieve the glory of God, even though that is what they're created to do. That they require a saviour, that they require someone to save them from the state that they're in. So 
that's why God gave the, the commandment, one of the reasons, it's not the only reason, but that's one of the principal reasons why God gave the law was to demonstrate the operation of sin through Israel to humanity. So why do you, so why do you think um, after death that, um, that the, say, the salvation isn't enough? Because if you're saying only uh, Jesus can... Um, uh, only humans can uh, meet God's glory through salvation, yeah. then that's going against your idea about deeds and rewards. Because once they di die, exactly. they still need to uh, to work their way up to, in those rewards. That, that's not... The, I mean, you, you, it sounds like that was a very flop attempt to create a gotcha moment. No, no, they, I mean, look, you, you seem to be talking to me in a kind of, I'm trying to gotcha you... But you're, you're, you're trying way. to create a, a contradiction. Let me let me explain Sorry. that a, a contradiction doesn't exist. No, no, no. From I, my I'm perspective. Just, no, but look, it's not... I'm not... Uh, I'm a, can I reply not, to your statement? Wait, wait, wait. But I'm not discussing this with you to give you a gotcha moment. I'm, I am discussing with you that if there is what I perceive is inconsistency. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just going to point out what I perceive. Okay, and, and so you can allow, clarify. And, that's and, a great and opportunity. That, that's what I'm going to try and do. Okay, but I'm, so, I'm saying you're not in a conflict. So, so, so in terms of in terms of the the, the thing, the, the Christian soteriology, you know, is very clear from the church fathers. It's very clear down through church teaching. Christ saves you. You can't save yourself. There are no works that you can do to save you. Right? Yes, Christ has to rescue you. We're looking from within this paradigm, not your paradigm. So. Yeah. yeah it's alright, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be because he's he's been educated by the Ali Dawas of this world and yeah. Ali, the, Ali the, Ali the, the Dawa team. To, that, that, that's why that's broader, why he's behaving like this. Because he's just got in with the, the thug Islam. Okay, don't lose your focus. Yeah. Just remember he did try to threaten yeah, yeah, okay, and fight yeah. me in front before the camera right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you, Jelly Bean? Anyway, so uh, now in in terms of in terms of what we were in terms of what we were talking about, the, so yeah, so so the, the 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 question of salvation is one that's solved by Christ, not by us. But when we are saved, those filthy rags are made clean. Those filthy rags that are our works are made valuable. They are made valuable because of what Christ has done for us, yeah. and then we receive a ward for them. What utter tosh. Yeah, I get that, but what I'm saying, what you're saying is that you How's stated that, that in he life, said, according to the scripture... Did you say your sorry, bad I'm actually, works are yeah, made Duke, good? Duke, Duke, I'm just having a discussion. Not, I really, I'm sorry, he, he's just I, I, spouting I, absolute I'm sorry, gibberish. I can't concentrate if you're talking at odds. Well, no, and I can't and, allow and I him be reasonably to speak respectful I can't to allow back. him. He would never have done that when he was a Christian. He would never have done that when he was a Christian. He's only done. He's only become this, this immature, pretend thug since becoming a Muslim. Ah, so wow. what you said to me, and I, I, look, I, I'm not doing gotcha, I'm just yeah. trying to get clear, clear what you So, believe. go on, express again and what you're not getting, because yeah. I'll try one more time to, to present it as best as I can. Generous of you. So, the, you said that, um, that the Old Testament was to prove... That the, you, the law. The Old Testament, the law of the Old Testament was to prove, the stories within that was to prove that you cannot be uh, get uh, achieve the glory of God through those works and that you need to be saved yeah but when you're saying after death you're saying that you after are, salvation after salvation because that yes, happens yes, in this world obviously the others go to hell but not according to you so no they do go forever. to hell according to me not forever they, oh, they are they're burned up in hell they, they yeah. they're burned up in hell forever yeah but I thought you changed. You changed. No, anyway, no, no, no. I'll come yeah, back to that. Yeah. So, so, um, so then after salvation, then somehow through salvation, your works can bring you to the glory of God, and it doesn't need extra input from uh, Christ. So that's that's kind so, of what so, you said. So, so, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe, maybe uh, we we need to add on um, uh, 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 some extra info, which is that your your works or your progression along that journey but that journey continues to, to the glory of god and that then that progression is eternal which constantly requires the grace of god so yeah, it's yeah, never yeah but also the building up of it as well because the thing is in our in our view of the new heaven and the new earth we still interact with one another yeah. we still interact with other beings 
you know, the angels, the saints, with other, uh, others of the church. And so there is this eternal opportunity to do more good, right. even in right. the afterlife. Right. And that still requires synergy with the work of the Holy Spirit. It still requires d increasing amounts of grace. And so we continue to progress down that way. So it's not that, it's not that, 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 that uh, after death, post-resurrection, that we no longer require God's grace or, um, or, or effective intervention, we, we become even more dependent on it you, as we go forward. Oh, more dependent on it? Yeah. So, what, so, so once after death, post-resurrection, are you going to be in this physical form on this world or a new world or in a, in a different form in heaven? Yeah. What's your, so Christ, cause it, cause yeah. you so Christians, Christians, Christians don't have um, one concrete answer on this. There are different opinions yours, amongst yours, Christians. Yours, yours, yours. So my personal opinion, my personal opinion, is that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So there will be an earth like this one. I don't believe it will exist in, in what we now consider this universe, because I think that will be have wrapped up and have been done away with. It will be a new, as it were, universe. Oh, for the want universe, of, for, the, for the want of For the want of a better description. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Remember, I'm, I'm trying to describe something that I have no experience of, and so language obviously falls short. And this is why Christians have different opinions about this. So my, my belief is that there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, and we will live lives on earth with the presence... Earth, an earth, well, it will be a new earth, essentially. It will be a new well, earth. I mean, if it's new earth, then it's just a clone or replica, it's not earth. So it's, yeah. it's I mean, earth like. I, don't, I think this is a, a, a very minor point. I don't, no, no, I don't I, think I, it's I, worth I, getting caught up on it. But not not yeah. that much. However, you want to describe it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I'm only asking about your description. Yeah. But anyway, so a new earth, you live in a, in a similar kind of existence, but with closer to the glory of God. Yes, the, glor the glory of God will be present on the earth. Like, we and won't need, sin. we won't need, there will be no more sin. We won't need, we won't need the sun because our light will be the light of God himself who will dwell amongst us. So, how, so you're, you, what was your definition of sin? To fall short of the glory of God. So, um, so if there's no yeah. sin in this new new earth, yes. then everyone does not fall short of the glory of God. So everyone's in equality then in regard to their closeness. Yeah, this is why so Christians. There is an, an eternal journey. So this is why that. Christians talk about saved and being saved. The moment you cross that line, you are, as it were, in the glory of God. Like being in a country, for instance. You're inside yeah, a territory, yeah. but you're not necessarily at the heart of that territory. It's like entering into a field. The moment you cross over a certain borderline, you're in the field, but you might not be at the center of the field. Okay. And and so when when we talk about once, so for instance, me and my brother here are in the glory of God now. The Holy Spirit is in us now. We are in the glory of God. Yeah. But our progression, our progression, when we when when we Hello. push forward, Any, is there? that we go we go See how deeper rude you into are, that Bob. You don't even want to talk to me. No, I'm not because <laughs> off camera, you I asked you. Did you, you insulted you the prophet. You, patient, you insulted very, the prophet. Your prophet is a paedophile. He's a rapist no, he's, and he's a slave trader. Like Which one of those not? factual statements? Like no, because I'm having a conversation with this man. There you go. There you go. You don't even want to. Hear a response. You, you, why do you come here if you don't Why are you being you rude to everybody? The prophet why are you trying to be a pretend thug? He, he was not a Why murderer. are you imitating the thuggish, loutish behavior of other Muslims in this park? No, because I'll tell you why. Of veneer of because politeness, you are following of, of Muhammad and Muhammad has turned you into this. the greatest man that ever lived. You never behaved like this when you were Christian, Luke. He didn't rape. You never behaved like this when you were Christian. He killed. And that's the difference, ladies and gentlemen. That is the difference. He was not a paedophile. Marrying a child is not the same as pedophile. Affiliate. Right. Marrying so a child. God. You're, you're in the glory of yes. God. But Muhammad I, was the greatest man that now. ever yes. lived. Prior God. to death. Yes. And you Muhammad was the no, greatest you're being rude, man Luke. Luke, that you're ever being rude. lived. You're being rude. Come on, give me a response. You're being rude. You're being incredibly rude. You're being incredibly rude. You're in my personal space. He's you're, very Luke, rude. You're in my personal space. He is, I Bob actually is a very did, rude that's man. man. Why, why? He's a very, very no, rude man. Why? Talk to me, Bob. I was trying to stand next to you so he couldn't stand between us. If I stand like that. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Why are you no, no, stop insulting <laughs> the greatest <laughs> man that this ever lived? The, the greatest man that ever lived is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe not Marcus Aurelius. Take the Shahada and become a Muslim. You definitely are an advertisement why no one should take the Shahada. You're just being destructive. Islam is the only just being rude. unhelpful and destructive. Stop spouting nonsense. If you're attempting to be a hero, it's not working. Yeah, you're looking like an idiot. No, I'm not. Honestly, you're looking like an idiot right now. You look like an idiot. You really look like an idiot. Come to Islam. It's the best. To come to Islam and behave like him. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the discipleship of Christ and the discipleship of Muhammad is what is on display here right now. Right. Muhammad was the last prophet of God. So you, you're in the glory. It was Joseph Smith. Of, uh, That's right. You're in the glory of God yeah. because you've taken. He's uh, claiming the Holy glory. Spirit what is it? Jesus. Uh, yeah. I'm talking within his paradigm, Luke. It doesn't. It, it's really unhelpful. Yeah. I, brother, it really is. You can do this anytime. I'd rather so, no, be I'm, not I'm, on I'm my trying side. to help you. I'm trying no, to help you're not him. helping I'm me. I'm trying to help everyone. Not no, no one's him. welcoming you into this conversation. You're just dense. Well, you no, don't good. get the message. I, I just walk in whenever you're, I want. You know, we I can see that. Corner, it just the seems, supremacy it just seems, of the Islamists it just in the past. Like Islam is just inherently Look, superior. it just seems destructive and saboteur. And it's unhelpful. Well, it just seems You're trying to reason with an irrational man. It's like trying to play chess with a pigeon. It will knock over the pieces and shit on the board and then strut around like it would. So what I'm trying to talk about a a particular belief of God's and I'm trying to clarify, and I'm not talking about your beliefs or other people's beliefs, I'm talking about... Yeah, and I wasn't talking about your beliefs, I was talking to him about my beliefs. Get his beliefs from him. Right. So every time you intervene, yeah. it just diminishes the conversation. I mean, but why would you want to listen to a lot of rubbish? Okay, why would you wanna... that's my choice, Luke. But thank you, well, well, thank well, you no, for it's, your it's thank you for choice. your attempt to because you're going to go to hell. Right, go on, bro. So you're you um, you're in the glory of God yeah. because you uh, believe in Jesus, and then you go into the afterlife, and you you're saying that the only way to be saved is through. Uh, that through salvation through Jesus, and but then you go into the the realm of the glory of God into the new earth, yeah. And that there's also gradation of that glory, yeah. in, in some kind of dimensional way, you yeah. know, either closer or some sort of internal dimension, whatever it would yeah. be, that you were gain there. But you but, and that you are assisted by the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus in that um, in that. Uh, journey. Venture, eternal journey yeah. to uh, achieve more and more glory. Yeah. How is that achieving? Uh, how do you, in this sinless world, achieve more glory? Now that, my friend, is I, I'm not even sure that I have language to describe it. I think it is more and more about r becoming your that your character becomes more and more like God's character. That but how do you achieve that? Though? Well, I mean, you, the, you this, see, what is the, what is the the will that yeah. does that, that because you're in a sinless world yeah here you can give arms to your brothers yeah uh, what can you do in that yeah well you you can still pray for people that are well you can still pray for people that are well you, 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 well as in healthy but, they, it, but it would be everyone would be healthy no? yeah yeah so exactly but but you can well you, even in this world you can still thank God for the goodness sure, sure, in good, other good. people. Appreciate where you are. Yeah, okay. you, you can still thank God for the goodness okay. of the world that we're in. Yes. And we can do that in a sinful world. So how much more can we do it in a sinless world? Well, what I'm saying is it's, it's actually quite easy, really, isn't it? So, well, so are you saying is that a that, problem? Well, what I'm saying is, is that you've got... That's a long, problem there. Well, you've got a long journey, haven't you? You've oh, got, yeah, it's an eternal you've journey. You've got, like, you know, uh, under 100 years here. Yeah. And, you've got an, and you're doing what you can. You come in yeah. here every Sunday, do yeah. what you can yeah. for the glory yeah. of God. Yeah. Um, but in this eternal world, it's yeah. like, there's not so much opportunity, to be no, honest. No, I, I think you're, I think you're totally you wrong, because I think what you're, what you're saying, what the, the, the premise that underlies your critique. No, no, hold on. Yeah, I'm yeah. replying to what you're saying. Because at the, at the base of that critique is the assumption that to increase in glory, we must fight against sin, as in the expression of evil in this world. Let me finish. But, but part of what the Christian understanding is to grow in glory is to grow in the celebration of goodness. Yeah, okay. So, so actually... But what you and to you, build on goodness. What you said that sin was the uh, turning, uh, bringing you things that bring you away from the glory of God. So in 
this uh, new earth, yeah. you're, uh, no sin. So you're because there's no one turning away from God. There's no one turning away from God. But the journey but towards God is eternal. And that is through worship and yeah. celebration. Now imagine in a world, now I'm, I'm going to use materialistic examples to describe what I'm talking about. So imagine in this new heaven and this new earth, infinite resources, infinite time and infinite opportunities. There, there are good works that we can do in the new heaven and the new earth that we can't even conceive of because they're just not even options to us in this world. And so this is what I'm saying about how we can increase in good works because there are good because of the fact that there's infinite time and infinite resources and infinite energy that that there are, there is the ability to do goods in the next world that we can't even do in this one. Because well, we live in a world of limited but, but, possibilities. Um, but, well, yeah, if you don't believe... You see, you see, so what you're describing is this life, this very limited in time life, to gain the salvation for the new world. You're saying that yeah. if you don't gain that salvation, you will go to hell. In your heretical belief, it's not eternity. Yeah, uh, but I'd argue it's not heretical. You it's certainly, it's it's certainly a minority position. Isn't that kind of her heresy? No, not necessarily. It's it, it's whether it falls into a permissible position, whether it falls I, into I permissibility. Believe, I don't believe that the I don't believe many Christian Orthodoxy type Christians would. Anyway, that's is another yeah. subject. It is another subject. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting subject. So you've got this construct that you get from the scriptures that helps you, you, you not you, but Christians understand if they understand that. Because I don't think that I've gone into fair amount of detail about this that yeah. people wouldn't yeah. necessarily do. Yeah, so. no, no. I appreciate. Honestly, I appreciate yeah. the, the the line of questioning um, you've undertaken. So you know, so so it, it creates this kind of construct that to some extent you might agree that you piece together from limited information from the scripture there's not there's not explicit you know so there's a few times you said well you know we can't be 100 percent sure about this but you, you piece yeah. together from the concept of it and also to some extent your internal uh, conceptualization yeah. about it how you imagine it must work based on your experience yeah. and your feelings and, and so so there's a difference between a dog a doctrine a dogma defined and a dogma undefined. So within the Christian worldview, so for instance, the begottenness of the Son is a defined doctrine of the church. The councils have met, a final statement has been given, everybody toes the party line on that. And if you don't toe the party line, you, you know, your, your description is either deficient and you need education, or if you're stubborn in it, you're a heretic. But, but there's a difference between that and undefined dogma. So in terms of like, a belief that we have that the church has not made a definitive statement on through an ecumenical council and and you know in terms of things like hell in terms of things like the description of paradise the church in its wisdom i think hasn't given a, the definitive description of these things it has doctrine of them so it has descriptions of them but it hasn't given a def definitive definition of what it means by these sets of words well, I which means that it, within those words it, there's latitudes of interpretation well, there is because then it can be uh, meet the person that involves interpretation so you have a more uh, structured perspective of yeah. Christianity so yeah. you have a more structured perspective of this journey to the glory of God yeah other people would say right I'm saved and that's it yeah but other people um, you know uh, might say that actually this this uh, the, the God of the Old Testament in particular is a effectively a demiurge um, that requires this kind of personal kind of worship and takes you away from the truth of your life that you go into this uh, this heaven like state until your merits of this world are let are, are spent and then you fall back into uh, the the a less uh, heavenly kind of state and that is the cycle obviously as you know yeah, we're, we're, so, so, sorry. Yeah, so we don't we don't believe in reincarnation but, but you can Christians. see that that in a way that you know the, the beliefs about reincarnation of um, actually you were saying well on this world this hundred years is limited yeah if, if hundred yeah. years but actually it's not limited in, in a in a multitude of reincarnation uh, opportunities of where actually you can be reborn onto this earth as in a in a new state a more kind of um, priestly state or but just whatever. just from a physics point of view this this earth is not eternal it will pass away it's going to be destroyed by an expanding sun at some point in the distant future well, so you know like, just from a, a, a scientific point of view 
the idea of an eternal earth and an eternal cosmos is, is just nonsense. I don't believe that is nonsense, but I will, I will end this discussion here. I yeah. will uh, another time... It's lovely to talk to you. I, as you know, I always give a gift to anyone who has a decent conversation with me. So I'd like to give you a gift as well. Yeah. On that uh, one. The family wants to know exactly the type of books, the, the title, so they can also research on them. Yeah, there you go. So you're giving him bad um, tea over... Um, no, because I think you believe in a god, don't you? Let me just see if I got something a bit better for you personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just for the record, what I what, what I believe. Oh, I'm John. Okay, is, actually, here we go. Is Love the you, John. perennial philosophy um, that is tracked through um, through the uh, original the Satavandama of uh, yeah. the understanding of 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 awareness. That I mean, is, are you a Hindu? No, no, that could be. Wait. That could be interpreted. That Jesus's kind of world could also be, or, or sayings could be interpreted yeah. through that verses, as could Islam and uh, and Muhammad through Ibn Arabi, then Master Eckhart, and then through yeah. uh, quantum physics and physics. But, but, but now the, and attempt, the, at, the attempt, the attempt, this to, is a, a thread of truth. Yeah, but but the attempt to try and dwell, bring everything together if it's, uh, as if it's one, and, and this is getting my my last I'll, comment I'll on speak it. To you yeah, is is some of that original because I think what that requires is an intellectual dishonesty about what these texts and these beliefs are actually saying. Anyway, well, I'll, I'll, this I'll, is for I'll, you. I'll, I'll, we were talking about we were talking about good works, and this is an example of a man who What's led life yeah. uh, a good works. Okay. Guys, get your own books. Like no, 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 the point yeah. is, no, no, no. The people don't understand. The people don't understand. No, the people don't understand, bro. It's kind of like the, the, the books that I get are just donations. I have not read every Let's single book. What I would what I would encourage you what I would encourage you to do, guys, is to go away and find good books. And then and then you know, give them away. Don't buy these two pens pamphlets. And I would encourage you guys to understand who am I and yourself through meditation and reflection rather than uh, yoga. Yeah, 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 self self examination is a part of the Christian faith. We got nothing to learn there. Peace for you, bro. Take, Take care. care. Thank you, John. We love you, John. So, 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 John, John was asking questions about um, uh, uh, soteriology. You know, uh, a Christian understanding of soteriology. And to the best of my understanding and ability, I've I've tried to give him um, uh, 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 an answer on what that is. And the thing about the thing I think that uh, jo that John is looking for is he's looking for synergy and, and, and synthesis between all these different world beliefs is looking for like a golden thread throughout all different world religions that just isn't there and I think you have to be I think you have to fool yourself a great deal and ignore a lot of evidence to pull out this golden thread that isn't there in the religions the point of the Christian faith is that we're created to know God and to enjoy him which means that when we turn our face away from God, when we turn our backs to God, we're falling short of the thing that we've been called to. And that is harmful to us and there's a consequence for it. There is a judgment for the unsaved and there is a judgment for the saved. We're not saved by our works, but our works do count for something when we are saved. And without Christ, our works count for nothing. They're just filthy rights. Okay, that's my... Uh,